Hello guys, so we're going to do a test here. This is the first of my um, 1001 Films to See Before You Die videos. Um, I'm filming it in a different style. I'm filming it on my iPhone as opposed to the Mac. I don't know if it's going to make any difference. Um, and I'm also putting this one through the ringer as well because it's going to go into um, the uh, iMovie on the Mac because I'm going to edit in a bit of video footage which I hope to do with all the films on the 1001 Film List to See Before You Die. Um, so this is the first of the films that I'm going to be reviewing from that list as an individual in the new aspect of videos. Um, and the first film that I am going to be reviewing from this list is something that I'm pretty sure most of you will probably not have seen, unless I've got some very, very niche audience members out there, which may be the case. And it is a film from 1936 called uh, My Man Godfrey. Um, it's on DVD, it's that old. Uh, I think this is all displaying backwards on the video as well because of how I'm filming it. So that will be displaying backwards. Um, but the film is My Man Godfrey. Um, it stars uh, a supposedly legendary actor called uh, William Powell. Um, and co-starring in it is a, a very good actress called Carol Lombard. Um, I haven't seen either of them in anything before. Um, I didn't know much what to expect when I ordered the DVD, so I put it in to see what, what was going to take place. Now, the first thing I will say is this DVD transfer of this film was appalling, as a lot of them can be from films way, way back. This was a cheap budget buy of a DVD as well, so the sound was really out of sync, really bad level mixing. The visuals were very white and blurry. I mean, <laughs> comparing that to some of the Blu-rays I've got now, it's like shocking. But anyway, let's put that to the side and judge the film for what it is. In a nutshell, William Powell plays um, a hobo, a bum, living in a living at a dumpster called Godfrey. Um, and one night he's picked up by Carol Lombard's character, um, who is playing this um, sort of really very upper class social game scavenger hunt where you know sometimes you might some of you guys might know about it where you've got to go and you've got like an afternoon two three hours and you've got to take pictures with certain things and it's the first one back and part of the task is they've got to bring a, a, a man a forgotten man to this high class party and she ends up bringing Godfrey along to the party and Godfrey's a no-nonsense straight talker he tells all the upper class people what he thinks of them but anyway the story goes that she adopts Godfrey as a butler at her home and she comes from a very very well-to-do family she's got a, a crazy crazy mother who has this protege protege called Carlos I think and I mean he's quite clearly like a toy boy for her but the production code at the time used the term protege to get around that um, Carol Lombard's character also has a sister who's very hoity-toity and the father is good com com comedic relief but anyway this whole household is just shown to be nitwits and narcissistic and absolutely ridiculous and Godfrey becomes the butler for them and he has to serve them and you just see how he takes over this household like just with his charm and just the way he is and he basically rebuilds this household a man from nothing comes in and rebuilds it and shapes them and you know, in that very 1930s way, they all learn a lesson by the end of the film. Now, it is, it's a funny film, that's important to say. This isn't something to be taken seriously, it's a funny film. Everything, just sit right down there like a good girl, and in just a minute, you'll forget that you had any trouble. Now, if you're, if you're not of the, the type to laugh at those early 30s, early 40s films, because they were of a very particular humour, I find that films back then have a very vaudeville style, so the humour was always very much exaggerated. So was the love stories, so was the happy stories. They were just exaggerated and exemplified. That's not to say they weren't good, that's what people were used to back then from vaudeville on, and on stage. And this is no different. There are some very funny moments in it. Um, I, I really did like the film. I thought it was cool. I wish I could have heard it and seen it better. The DVD transfer, as I say, was not, not very good at all. But the film itself was, was very good. And Godfrey's turnaround and what you learn about Godfrey towards the end of the film is very revealing and very, very interesting. I, I personally would recommend this film to someone who is a fan of the early 30s, early 40s films. This is one you may not have, not have seen before. If you're not into old-fashioned films, I would stay away from it because, unless you're very open-minded, by, by all means, go and check it out if you want to. But I think that this would probably divide a lot of people indeed. Um, and a lot of people would just think, short tooth, what are you reviewing this film for? It's on the list and that's what I'm doing it for. Um, I recommend you go and check it out. Although the ending is a little bit silly and it sort of just throws itself fanciful to the wind for a bit of a fairy tale ending. 
the journey getting there is very funny and very poignant and, and, and it's interesting enough to keep you going. It's only like 80 minutes, 90 minutes, so it's very, very, very much worth a pop. I'd be interested in seeing some of the other stuff by the director, who I believe is called uh, Lagava. Um, but if you're into those early films, check it out. If you're not, disregard. Anyway, this is how the format is going to be. This is a very short review, and this is how all my reviews will be from the 1001 films to see before you die. This was the first one, My Man Godfrey. If you have a chance, go and check it out. Um, if not, just wait until my next video until you get something more current, maybe. Uh, guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching this first video. Um, see you soon. Thank you.